What is up everybody? It's me, Gina Bianca, and I'm here to share with you another crazy black box dye to blog transformation. Okay, so let's get started. My guest found me on YouTube from one of our other box dye correction videos. As you guys may know, I am a specialist in color correction, which is pretty scary, but also pretty awesome. I've been doing it for about 12 years and I'm obsessed with transformation. I love helping people get that like really crazy transformation in one sitting. However, there are a lot of risks. There's a lot of things that come with that instant gratification. And uh, my guest found me, she is beautiful. Her name was Paula. Hi Paula, I know you're gonna watch this with Steve. And I was really happy with the whole process. So when Paula had reached out to me, she had booked a six hour color correction and the way that I do my bookings is through Calendly and they go in, they book, they pay in full and it's kind of like buying credit. So it's like if you buy a bunch of tanning sessions, you just come redeem them. But for colors, color services like a correction, I require a minimum of a six hour booking. And if they let me film it, typically I'll send them home with all of the products that they need as a thank you. Because when they do let me film the service, it's like really helping elevate the beauty industry and help share the information with everybody. So basically we had gone back and forth. She had sent me some pictures. Her hair was box dye black for a few years. And then back in 2017, she had gone and bleached her own hair multiple times, got it done professionally, and she ended up having to cut it all off. So she was pretty nervous about the entire process, but I shared with her from the beginning, your hair is going to be blasted for a couple of weeks or months, um, your hair, it's hair, you guys. Like if we wanna push it to the extreme, we need to give it some time to rest. And typically after a color correction, your hair feels pretty dry. It needs a lot of love, care, and concern. <laughs> and you have to be really gentle and patient with it. So she has very textured hair. It was extra curly, tightly coiled hair. So it's very, very curly already. It was very thick and she had a ton of it. I knew from looking at her that the application would take a minimum of two hours, probably three, which it ended up taking about three hours. So we had gone back and forth and she had decided, you know, I'm not sure if I wanna do it. I really don't wanna cut all my hair off. And I'm like, I don't think you have to cut all your hair off, but just know that you're gonna have a long healing process. It's hair, like it's already dead. We were talking about this at breakfast this morning. Bridget, who works with us, she's just like, it's already dead. Like, you know, it definitely needs some time to heal through a traumatizing experience. And any bleaching experience, whether you're going ahead and doing a few simple highlights or if you're going in and doing um, you know, heavy balayaging, any heavy bleaching service, your hair needs to recover, which is so crucial to have the right products, take care of your hair, baby it, and to really just like expect that if you want a crazy transformation, if you want that instant gratification, that is going to take healing. So we decided she's still gonna come in for her appointment, we're gonna see what happens, and any hours that she doesn't use will go towards her next service. Flash forward to the consultation. She came in, we had a great consultation, her hair felt good. Um, it was pitch black. You guys will see, pitch black. So um, she had been coloring it with box dye for years and um, it was black. So I shared with her, I was like, listen, I think we should do a heavy, 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 heavy highlight, but I'm gonna go and set up a platinum card. And the reason I don't wanna do a platinum card is because I wanted to give her a really nice blend up here so that when it grows out, it would be much nicer. And so that we didn't like have to focus on every single hair because she had so much hair. So what I decided to do is a heavy, heavy foil through the back sections, I decided to leave some hair out and in the front sections, which, which everyone is gonna see, I went way, way, way tighter. So you're gonna see the whole application. Um, again, I charge 125 an hour and I do require them to pay in full to book me. They're allowed to move the appointment if they want to, if they no show. Bye, sorry. I'm so glad my guest showed up. She found me from Rhode Island. She drove two hours to see me. Put the pressure on, right? Um, but she ended up being incredible. 
we got her to a great color. And here's the before. All right, so here's the before picture, as you guys can see. She has black box dye, and her hair, although it's blown out beautifully, very, 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 very thick, extra curly, tightly coiled hair. I wanted to add in like a little pro tip. She was taking selfies before and after, and she was just like so much more comfortable that my camera flipped and that she could see herself. So do yourself a favor and take their before pictures in selfie mode. You'll get a lot more content and they'll feel a lot more comfortable. I use the Canon EOS something, something, something. It's the content creator kit. I bought it, it was reasonably priced. I'll link it below. But I use that camera and it flips up and you can see everything in selfie mode. So here's the sectioning. I decided to do my normal, most commonly used sectioning. So it's the two sections in the back, the triangle, and then each side is sectioned off. And then I did two mohawks at the top. So she parted way over here. And the reason I did the two mohawks is because I wanted to make sure that her part was in the middle of the first mohawk. That way when the hair splits, it's even. And then because we were gonna do such a heavy highlight, I didn't wanna like leave this to just go straight up. I wanted to do another mohawk so I can go really tight here. And you'll see the placement and everything that I used. So I did two mohawks and I recommend that for somebody who parts to the side. And especially if you want that heavy, heavy coverage because it's gonna give you way more coverage and control and they're gonna be able to part their hair either way, and especially for people with a ton of hair. You don't wanna just leave a lot out because what you leave out, you're gonna see more. So since our goal was to go really, really blonde, as blonde as we possibly can, um, I decided to do the double mama. All right, so for this transformation, I decided to go in and use the Oligo Pro Extra Blonde with 20 volume. You guys know I usually start with like five or 10 volume, but I used the 20 volume and then I tried this bond builder called Inalux. They sent it to me to try. So I ended up using this bond builder and it says level up your developer. So I went in and I used 20 to start with 10 and I used 10 for about 90% of the application until the last like 30 foils, I used 30. I mix Oligo Extra Blonde one to one. That's a good consistency and it mixes really, really nice. It's easy to apply, but I'm sure we can mix it uh, less thick or thinner if you're doing a different kind of application. All right, so we started in the back and I went in and I took a very fine weave at her hairline. I did her foil and then as I moved up, I kind of customized the foil placement and I went in and I took foliage sections where I would skim off tees and then go in and anchor the foil and apply the lightener. So I mixed it between weaves, slices, foliage, and I left out a good amount of hair, but I still took small initial sections. So depending on how light you wanna go during these services, if you take a small initial section, less hair is gonna be left out. So even if you take a section and weave off of it, the smaller that initial section is, the lighter the result will be. So through the back, I took pretty small initial sections, but I weaved, I foliaged, I left some out, and I really wanted to get through the back as quickly as I could so I can spend most of the time focusing on the front. So as you can see in the clips, you know, I did weaves, foliage where I went in and teased. And I love to go in and do teas. Like, you know, what goes up must come down. We've talked about that in a lot of videos, so make sure you go back and watch the rest of my videos. But if you tease from the mid up, you're gonna get more blend. If you tease from the bottom up, you're gonna get more dimension. So I just did for blend, just to go in and make sure that I can saturate all the way through. I only feathered and smudged a little bit so that I can get the best possible saturation. And I'm loading on the product. We ended up going through probably at least a full, we went through a whole tub of this, and this is two and a half pounds. Her head was really heavy. Um, so we went through at least a tub and a half of lightener on this one guest, and we had to reapply, but we'll get there. <laughs> so you're gonna repeat on both sides, which you do in the back, starting with the weaves, going up with the foliage, and then once you get to the top, crown section, which you're gonna do. I usually like to do a triangle here, and there's a lot of different ways you can foil that triangle. You can go diagonal into vertical, you can go diagonal all the way up, 
you can go horizontal, you can go vertical. You're gonna get a different look every time. I have a great course on color placement that you guys will love. It's called Strategic Color Placement. It's amazing and it breaks all of that down for you. But basically, in short, you can foil diagonal for it to be softer, horizontal, you can customize a billion different ways with your weaves, and um, vertical is gonna be much more popping. Cool. So in this section, I went in and I started, because I'm going to go horizontal and customize, I started with the tip of the triangle with a foliage section. So I just went in, took a horizontal section, teased, and then sliced it. And then I go in and I do a mixture of weaves and uh, thicker and thinner weaves to get as much coverage as possible. And I added some foliage pieces in there. So I did the whole crown section customized. You can customize it as much as you want, however you can pack those foils in. As long as you take those clean, clean, clean sections, you will have a great result. So as I got to like the middle of the triangle, her head shape, it gets much wider. So I decided to use the Big Papa Framar foils. They sent me these to try out. I love these foils. I tried them as they were developing them and now they're finally here. They're amazing. I love the size of these. They're my favorite foils they've ever created. These are typically my favorite, the Starstruck um, 8x11. Like this is the foil I use for most people. I don't rip it, you know? And then when you rip it, it's kind of small. So I use this most of the time, but they just came out with a big papa. And you can join my mastermind group, the Network Mastermind, and I do have a savings code for this, or you can use my affiliate link below, but my mastermind members do get a discount with Framar now. So these are the foils. They're giant. And I like to rip them, and you can rip them three ways. So if you're doing smaller sections, you can rip them here, you can rip it here, or you can rip down the middle. So this, when you rip down the middle, is such a good size. Like th these are great for taking just a little bit of a wider section, or if you're taking a little bit of a bigger section, these can handle it and give the uh, foil room to expand. Because if you've got a lot of hair and product into the foil, it's still gonna close to be about this big, right? It's bigger than normal, so you can take a little bit more hair in there but it gives it room to expand. And when you see how these foils swelled, you're gonna be like, wow, good thing she used those because it was really swelling. All right, so the back is done. It took about an hour. We had to cover everything and we really went through a lot of lighter. So let's check it out and see where we are, how much we've lifted. So as you can see, it's pretty bright, it looks pretty bright on camera, but what you might not notice is it's a little splotchy and uneven through the bottom. So at this point, the lift is okay, but the stubborn box dye on the ends is going to require a reapplication. So at this point, we kind of mentally accepted and prepared for the fact that we have to open every single foil and reapply again. So let's move on to the sides. So what I did for her money piece, and I just have those two side sections, what I did for her money piece is I went weave, 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 slice, slice, and then I did a foliage slice. And basically what that means is I took a small section, tease, 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 tease from the mid, so it's just for blend, and then I glued, brought it down, but I left a good amount of depth right behind that money piece so that it has a little bit of darkness to pop onto. And then I went in and continued doing weave with a slice right behind it, weave with a slice right behind it, weave with a slice right behind it, through pretty much the entire front area. In some areas, I might just go back to back weave, I might go back to back slice, I might just go in and go weave slice, but I really was focusing on getting that color on. I wasn't focusing on a perfect pattern through the sides, I was focusing on a lot of coverage. So I went in, went through, um, and really was sure to take small, small, small sections and remain clean. I was also, this whole video is muted because the music is blaring, but I was also like in deep conversation with my guest. So my application isn't perfect when it comes to pattern, but as long as those sections are tiny and you're going in and alternating, you don't have to worry about everything being 
pristine and perfect. The, the placement, as long as the sections are small, is going to be amazing. Small, clean, tight tension, and heavy saturated sections, you will win. And go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna move in to the mini mohawk. That is our second mohawk that we did. And we're gonna go in and do weave, 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 slice, slice. And then go in and do that foliage section. And it's just gonna give her a little bit of depth behind the money piece so that it has a little bit of pop. We're doing such a heavy foil that it's not gonna be a lot of dimension. But just doing that little foliage money piece, uh, the foliage, the foliage money piece. You know, tight, tight weave and then foliage behind it to leave a little bit of their natural depth behind. It really will help make it pop. After that, I'm doing one of my favorite foil placements. Weave with a slice right behind it. I call it weave slice with no space. So if you think of it like that, so it's a weave. The only thing left out of that reserve, the only thing left out is the reserve of the weave. So we're gonna go weave and then a slice right behind it. Weave and a slice right behind it. And then only the reserve from the weave is left out. Now if you have a guest who wants to go platinum but doesn't wanna bleach out their roots and do the whole thing, this is a great foil placement. It takes a long time. It took me probably three hours to foil her. It took a long time to foil her and it, that pattern up on the top was super important to be clean about. So this at the top mohawk section is where I really got diligent and focused. Um, this is where I was like, okay, I have to make sure this pattern is super clean. So it was weave with a slice right behind it, weave with a slice right behind it. And you can always customize this and go weave, weave, slice, weave, weave, slice, or you can go weave with a slice right behind it with a slice right behind it. You know, you can go in and customize these patterns. And if you ever have a guest who maybe waited way too long to get her bleach retouch done, but she wants to be a bleach retouch, but it's not possible without doing the full platinum card, you can always go in and do this placement to transition a bleach retouch down to a full, full, full coverage foil. All right, so we got to the point where we're done foiling and then did we get a break? Absolutely not. No, there was no time to waste, especially the first five hours of a color correction. There's just no time to waste and no time to dilly dally or lollygag around the salon. Like you really have to keep it moving. So what we did is we started mixing um, to reapply the ends and we ended up going in and it took a village, <laughs> it took a team because we had to go in and hold the foils up open it up and then reapply and just, just reactivate the ends. So we didn't go in and wipe everything off. We just went in and reactivated the ends to give it a little bit more energy. Um, and then we closed the foils back up. To let the front catch up with the back, we brought some heat lamps over and we just heated it up from far away. The salon is all brick and it's a little bit cold. It's, it's brick and concrete, so it's a cool salon. So if you don't think of those things when you're going in and doing these colors, you could have a challenge with lift. So we just added a little bit of heat, not direct heat onto the foils. We really just went in and just warmed up the area, similar to, to if she was like outside, like hanging out near the sun. All right, so as we pull all the foils out, we shampoo a few times. I ended up using the Redken Acidic Bond Complex. I've never used this before. Um, oh, Acidic Bonding Concentrate, whoops. Um, they sent me this to try out, and I used this pretty much the whole time I was shampooing and rinsing and doing everything. I was like, let's see if it works, because her hair was 
lightened. You know what I mean? So this is supposed to be for healthy hair, shine, all those good things. Um, and it worked, it did, it did good. Um, but the thing is, is like, there's no miracle product in my opinion. Like this worked great. I'm glad I used it. There's just no miracle product when you're doing a eight hour correction from black box dye to blonde. There's just nothing that's going to go in and take away all the pain. The bond builder I'm sure helped, but the hair still was like, okay, like I need to be treated and conditioned and baby. And that's just how it goes. You know, you can't rely on and be like using anything as a crutch. I mean, so just think about that. It was a great option to use. I will definitely use it again, but I went in with the shampoo conditioner and then I did the whole treatment. Um, and you know, we did that for like 20 minutes before we even considered the toner. So after we did a treatment on her, the treatment sat on for about 20 minutes. And the reason I did that is because I want to start closing down the cuticle. So it's really, really, really important to start closing down the cuticle. Otherwise, the, the hair can't handle holding on to anything else. It just can't. It's too tired. It's just like, I'm done with you. Bye. So I like to do a few treatments to help really start closing the cuticle down. That way it doesn't pull too much. It doesn't take the color too much. And that way it doesn't just let it go immediately. All right, so when considering the toner, we were, I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna use Palmachol the Demi, but to be honest with you, when you're two hour, when your guest lives two hours away, if her color fades, she's not coming back. Like it's really screwed up to make them come back. And I don't know why I don't tone with permanent color more often, but I'm so freaking glad I did. So we did the treatments on her. It felt good. Um, we were able to brush through it nice and easy and everything was good. So what we did is we went in and um, towel blotted her hair, brushed her out, and then we went in and applied on damp hair. Paul Mitchell, the color XG. So I love this color line. I'm really happy to be using it again. I took a break from Paul Mitchell for like two years and worked with other brands, but I've been using Paul Mitchell for over a decade. I love Paul Mitchell color and I know this color very, very well. So I'm excited to use it more and teach you guys about it and really get deeper into, you know, color theory and all of those things. Cause I've used this for so long. I almost know it like the back of my hand. So I used 5N and 6BG. So I'm gonna show you what those look like. So I used 5N and 6BG. And because her hair had lifted so much and because the foils were so packed in, foils and it swelled a lot. I don't know what it was with the Oligo Extra Blonde. Um, maybe it was the box dye, but it swelled a ton. And we were like, okay, um, we definitely had some bleed marks. So what we had to do is we had to go in and do her root. And it was amazing because the level six-ish, because on damp hair, it um, kind of dilutes a little bit. So the level six, we used 10 volume, 5N, 6BG, and we put that on her root and it really softened her base. So it really blended everything and looked amazing. I went in and I applied her base and then I toned her ends with this version of Nag. If you've been following me for a while, you know Nag is natural ash gold. So I used 8N, 8A, and the 9BG. So as you can see, we have 8N, 8A, and 9BG. And it just makes like a neutral, pretty blonde. She had some warmth left over. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but you, she got past the yellow orange. And what I wanted to do is tone her with the permanent color because I knew the toner is gonna fade. I know it's gonna level up a couple levels, um, but I wanted to make sure that it was more opaque and gave her more coverage because she lives two hours away and her cuticle is open. Okay, so it's going to fade. This is color correction reality. And anybody who posts videos about color corrections being rainbows and butterflies is lying to you, okay? So <laughs> please just know that like these services are stressful. They're scary. People's hair means everything to them. So the decisions that you make behind the chair, it takes many years to be confident and decisive and know exactly what to do. Um, one of my biggest tips and tricks for you guys is nag natural ash gold to create a balanced formula. And this is just a version of that, a version of NAG, because you can customize NAG a billion different ways. It doesn't have to be NAG. It could be um, an NN with a 
AA and with a regular G. You can switch it up depending on the level, depending on what they have. But because her hair was a little bit warm, some areas were super light, some areas were a little yellow orangey, but she was primarily outside of the banana yellow, but mostly, she was primarily outside of the banana yellow and she had a lot of pieces that were inside of the banana. So this formula I really loved. Um, and I wanted to keep her bright. You know, her features, her skin tone, she's beautiful. I did not want to wash her out with an ash. Like, it would look bad, you know? Um, I'm sure she can look great with a shaved head. She's a beautiful woman. All right, so I'm not usually a fan of when a guest comes in and they want something that is gonna totally go against their skin tone and features. So I highly recommend as an artist, you if you think something's not gonna look right on them, tell them. You know, if she had come in with pictures of Ash, I would just be like, listen, she's beautiful. Like, I want her to look her best. That's my job, is to make my clients look and feel their best, right? So if they want to be blonde and that's going to make them feel their best, great. I can do it for them, but it has to be the right shade of blonde or else they're not going to like it. And then what if they go home and their family member doesn't like it and it messes with their head and then they just abandon ship and they're just like, okay, well, I don't like it anymore. Or they make you feel like you did something wrong or something. And it's just like, now you have a redo. But in reality, it wasn't meant to be on that. You know, so use your expertise and use your voice. And remember, it's okay to say no. If you haven't heard my color correction podcast, it's called Color Correction Boundaries of the Gina Bianca podcast. I'll link it below for you guys. It's a great podcast. And then Color Correction, Salon Reality Color Correction Part 1 and 2. You guys can always go watch those videos. They're really, really good and about the reality of color correction. They're not rainbows and butterflies. Hair, people's hair needs rest after them. And if you want instant gratification, if you don't want to live at red orange, it's a lot of thought and a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of money that goes into it. So believe it or not, my favorite hair to blow dry is naturally curly, tightly coiled hair. Like I freaking love blow drying. It's like challenging because it's like to really get that curl out and for it to be smooth and for it to really close down, it takes a lot of effort and elbow grease. I love to blow dry it. So I used a bunch of different products on it. You'll see on the screen. Um, I really was just using what's around in the salon at the network. All of our stylists use different things. Um, we're bringing in a bunch of amazing products, but it's fun to try different things. So I was just kind of using things that were around the salon. And yeah, I went in, I blow dried her hair and I focused on blow drying the whole front first so that she can see it. Now the salon was really dark. Like it had, it was like seven o'clock by the time we were blow drying. We started at 10 a.m. So it was nine hours. Um, it, it was a really long day and then you know, the sun goes down and most salons have a bad lighting. So we have these beautiful skylights, but it's dark, you know what I mean? And it's brick and it's warm looking. So she's like, we're, I'm blow drying and I'm like, what do you think? And I'm looking at it from my perspective. I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. And she's just like, I like it. And I'm just like, I was like, come on. Like, you know, like people don't understand like how difficult it is to get it even. Um, so I stopped, and this isn't on the film, I stopped, I turned the chair around, I put the ring light on her and I handed her a mirror. Before I blow dried the whole thing stressed out and annoyed, I just like wanted her to see what I saw. So don't be afraid to show them. And I always do it, we call it the money piece. And it's literally this whole front area so they can see what it looks like before you blow dry the whole thing. Because if she doesn't like the tone, if she wants it darker, if she wants something, at least she didn't blow dry the whole head, right? She ended up loving it and she ended up loving it. But what if she sat there stressed out for 45 minutes because it's dark and she can't really see? So don't be a chicken shit stylist and turn them away. Own it, okay? Own what you've done. Style them in front of the mirror. Teach them how to style their hair. Talk to them about product and then show them what it looks like. And if you have to get up and move around or do a ring light or use a hand mirror, do that. It's worth it. I like to curl on high and I only leave it on for like five seconds. So I will go in, I'll take small sections and you'll see I kind of like ribbon, ribbon it out. 
Um, you can also have it lower and leave it on longer. So use a thermal protectant, but I prefer to go in and take small sections and just rev in it and do it faster. All right, let's go in and see the before. Let's remember where we started because honestly, like after eight hours, it's like, what did my hair look like this morning? Let's look at where we started. All right, so as you can see, this is the beautiful end result. She was so happy. This literally took all day. I drove two hours practically to get here, and this has totally been worth it. I am super satisfied. I love the service. I'm completely, um, what is the word I'm looking for? You're shook. <laughs> I'm shook. I am shook. I am shook. I am, I am very taken a surprise by I'm super happy with the service here at the staff everybody's super professional and very comforting securing and love it love it what was the word you were looking for impressed <laughs> <laughs> super impressed I love it <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope that you love this video. I hope that you learned something from it. And if you'd like to join us in Mastermind, we are focusing all next month on color correction and all of our videos are saved so you can rewatch them as many times as you want. Mastermind is only $40 a month. It's absolutely crazy not to join. There is so much content. We do weekly coaching sessions, group coaching. You get access to one-on-one -on -one coaching with me if you'd like. And we have so many other benefits and an amazing community. So do yourself a favor and at least check out what we have to offer. You get access to so many hair courses, so many business courses. And next month, if you need help with color correction, next month we are focusing on all of that and it'll be available for you and Mastermind at the most affordable price for subscription education in the beauty industry that includes the the most and the most amazing, amazing content that'll help you grow your business and change your life. Again, I hope that you like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends, share it, share it on Facebook. You guys, it would mean so much to me if you shared my education with your friends and family. I work so hard to provide it for you and I want as many people as possible to see it. So thank you guys so much again for spending your time with me. I hope to see you at Mastermind.